it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of my first Reading Rush reading vlog. I'm still not sure how many of these there will be. My goal is two, but who knows, maybe there'll be three. I don't know yet, but the point is, welcome to the start of the Reading Rush. I'm really excited. If you're not familiar, I'm basically participating in a week-long readathon. I already have a TBR video, uh, which if you haven't seen, I'll have it linked down below if you're curious on my goals and the books I hope to read across this uh, week. Um, I do work a full-time job, so the first five days of this readathon, I'm obviously going to just be doing as much as I can after work, um, but obviously the weekend, I hope to read a bunch. The first part of this reading vlog, I'm probably going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, and then maybe Saturday and Sunday. I'm not sure. We'll see. But I wanted to talk about the books I hope to read in the first part of this readathon. Um, so let me show them off. First and foremost, let's talk about Matilda, who's right here. Hello. Um, so these are the books I hope to read. So let's quickly chat through them. The first book, I'm just gonna prop it on Matilda, is The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I'm actually gonna be listening to the audiobook of this, which I think is perfect to listen to kind of essentially throughout the week during my work day as I'm you know, doing other tasks. But the audiobook for this is on script, but this is a middle grade fantasy novel following a young girl who lives in the forest with her adopted mother Mother, who is a witch in this world young children are basically like sacrificed to this witch in the forest um, to try you know essentially so their town isn't like destroyed by this witch but the witch is actually really nice she takes the children in and finds some new homes this young girl um, was a child that was left in the forest and the witch accidentally gave her moonlight instead of starlight and actually is raising her now as her own um, and she has magical powers I've heard really good things I think it's gonna be really beautifully written which I love um, so I'm excited to listen to this throughout the week but I'm gonna start it today Next, I have The Assassin's Quest um, by Robin Hobb, which I started over the weekend. I'm on page 160. This is tricky for me. I had always planned to just read like 50 pages of this a day, read it slowly throughout the week, but I immediately, oh, my, my tripod left me. But as I was saying, I'm actually really into this book right now, and I really don't want to put it down. Um, so hopefully that doesn't, you know, throw too big of a curveball into my readathon. But luckily there's a bunch of books I hope to read. But I might be reading more than 50 pages of this today a day, especially when we get into the weekend. But the last book I hope to read, I guess, during this multiple day stretch is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This is a romance novel, um, which I think will work really perfectly, sandwiched in between all my fa fantasy novels. Uh, it's also not very long, and I love rom-com romance, so I'm hoping to just breeze through this. But this is about a girl who basically has like a bucket list. Um, she falls in love with the boy. I think he, I think it's Hades to Love. I'm really excited about this. Monica, I mean, everyone loves this book, so I feel like this is perfect for a readathon. Um, I lost my other one, but yeah. The, those are the three books I hope to read over the next three days. Get as far in this as I can, finish this, and get a decent of the way through that audiobook. So that is my plan. It's currently 11 a.m. on Monday, so I have to get back to work. I have a meeting here in like five minutes, but just wanted to start this vlog, say hey, I'm gonna be starting to listen to my audiobook soon, um, which I'm excited about, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, but for now, hi, and I'll be doing a lot more reading and talking after work this evening, but just wanted to like get the vlog kicked off. Welcome to the start of my readathon vlog series. A. <laughs> my audiobook lined up time to oops wrong one time to get to listening hi friends i'm about to make some soup for lunch um i have like some squash soup to heat up so i'm gonna do that but i also wanted to say i've listened to the first four chapters of the girl who drank the moon on audio and i'm loving it so far i picked this book up with like the hope that it would be very lyrical and beautiful and just like a really charming story that kind of has like lots of great lessons in it and i think that's definitely what it is but the audiobook is also great like on top of the writing being great the narrator does all these different voices and her voice just feels so nice um i just feel like i'm like being told this tale and i'm loving it so much but yeah so another part of the story is aside from the children being given to the forest to keep this evil witch at bay what's really going on is this, this city called the protectorate it's like walled in and the elders of this city control basically everything including most of the money it's a really sad town and as we learned through the elders POV they sacrifice the children not because they think there's an actual witch 
um, but instead to keep the populace fearful and reliant on them for protection. Um, but the young boy doesn't know this. I think he's much more idealistic. He's gonna go on an adventure to try to save his people, but he's gonna realize that it's the elders who are evil. At least that's what I'm assuming is gonna happen. But I love it so far. The narration is amazing. It's really charming and all the voices are great. <laughs> and it's shifting like to the protectorate and then back to the witch. And as well as like an individual kind of like talking to their own child about the experience of giving up one of their children. Um, but I'm really liking it. So off to a good start. Yum. Hi friends, ignore my disheveled state. Clay and I are about to step out and get a nice midday snack from a local bakery. Um, but I've actually had a lot of time to listen to my audiobook today, which is awesome. I've listened to about two and a half, maybe a little bit more of The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which translates into 100 pages. So I'm about 25% done with this book and I'm really liking it. It's such a charming story. And I'm truly just a sucker for like a fairy tale-esque kind of book. Um, you know, that just kind of like sweeps you away in this sort of magical setting with these characters that are, you're gonna learn from, but you're gonna root for. <laughs> and it's just a really interesting tale of a town and this forest and magic and this land and the consequences and all of that. Um, it also just has like good world building and just like an overall like very clever build up of how magic has kind of retreated, especially from this one particular area, Protariot and kind of seeing all the pieces slow start to come together I think is great. It's also multi-POV, which I wasn't necessarily prospecting. I thought we'd be primarily following Luna, the young girl, but we follow the witch, we follow individuals within the Protariot, we follow all different types of POVs, which I think, again, helps flesh out the world a bit more, but overall, I'm really liking this a lot. It's really beautiful, and it's really engaging, and yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan so far, so I'm excited to listen to this throughout the week. I should not have an issue finishing listening to it by end of week, um, so that's good news. I probably won't listen to any more today, which is why I'm kind of giving a general update as by the time I finish work I'll pick up my physical books to read. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking this and the audiobook is really well done. I love the narrator, so yay! Good start so far. Today's snack, cinnamon sugar roulette from our local French bakery. Delicious. Isn't that right, Matilda? Hi everyone. So it is just past seven and I've just finished work. So I'm officially picking up my first book that's not an audiobook of my TBR for the readathon. And the book I've decided to start with is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I feel like a romance will be a fast, fun read and something perfect for the earlier part of my work week when I'm a little busier and a little more tired when I finish my work day. So I'm actually hoping to get a really good chunk of the way through of this tonight and hopefully finish it tomorrow that's my goal but i'm gonna go ahead and get started and i'll keep you guys posted with my progress hello everyone it's me so i'm happy to report that i've already read a quick 70 pages of this book um it reads super quickly which is exactly what i was hoping it to be i already gave a brief synopsis at the beginning of this video but i would say i'm definitely right on the hate to love scenario and the adorable banter between our two main characters are the best i also didn't realize we'd be reading perspectives from both of them which I think is always really fun in romance because you can kind of see them both fall in love with each other it's always really interesting too whoever like falls in love or realizes it first especially in their case because they both think they dislike each other so much but there's such chemistry anyway so far it's really cute it's exactly what I was wanting I also really like Chloe as a main character. But yeah, I'm excited to read more. I'm definitely, as I said, I'm gonna try to read a lot of it tonight. I'm gonna take a break and make some dinner though because I am pretty hungry, so I'm gonna do that really quickly. Um, but I just wanted to say I've read 70 pages. It means I've read 170 pages so far today, which I am pretty pleased with. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start dinner, but just wanted to let you guys know. Alrighty, so for dinner, I'm just gonna whip up a quick vegetable stir fry over some rice, fried egg on top, should be fast and tasty. So that's what I'm gonna make. All the chopping, I required two chopping boards tonight to get all my prep ready, but this should be very tasty. I'm gonna cook my veg separately so I can get a little crisp on them, because I have a small pan, you know, New York City apartment props. But this way I can kind of get a little char situation. At least that's what I hope. And then I'll combine it, sauce it, 
fry some eggs, put it over rice. Should be good. To the last step, everyone, just frying some eggs. Bon appetit. Time to finish Real Housewives and then I am back to reading. Hi world, so I've read past the 120 page mark and I am just a bundle of softness for this book. I've just come to terms that I'm a person who loves fantasy novels and political stuff and murder and all of that, but I also just love a fluffy romance. I die for it. It feeds my soul and this book is so adorable. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned the synopsis already. As I mentioned when I read the synopsis, um, this is a multi-POV story. We follow Chloe in red and I just love them. Um, this book does have disability rep. Chloe has chronic pain um, and they live across from each other. Red is like the superintendent of her apartment building and I love them. I love them separately. I love them together. I love the back and forth. I love that they both don't want to admit that they have feelings for each other and just seeing them fight it is just my favorite thing. I love it so much. I also love that Red is such a sweet little soft cinnamon roll of a person. He's so sweet and he's like really nice and caring and Chloe I really love too and I relate a lot to Chloe's personality. She's really independent, she's really list oriented, she's very structured, she doesn't take risks, um, which I'm similar in that way. In particular, there's one scene that I think is amazing because I actually dislike motorcycles, I dislike motorcycle tropes in romance novels, but riding a motorcycle on Chloe's list, that's what makes it so perfect because I'm pretty sure based on Chloe's personality that she thinks motorcycles are dumb too, but that's why she put it on her list. So seeing her like reconcile with writing something and then and then kind of like giving into the joy of the experience, hi Matilda, was really great. And that's just like one small example of this book, but ugh, it's just so cute and so charming. And I just love romance. I love these characters. I just, it's a great time. I'm having a great time. Oh, also I love the family element to this as well. Chloe has two sisters, which I'm pretty sure have their own books, which is great, because they're great. Uh, and I love seeing the sisterly relationship there too. It's just so charming. It's impossible not to love. So I'm gonna get back to reading now. Hi, it's very late. I'm on page ooh, 224 of this book. That means I've read over 300 pages day one of the reading rush, which let me flip you around. I'm very jazzed about. I really should go to bed soon, but I really don't want to put this book down because I am just so invested. Here's the thing um, about romance. I love pretty much most romance. Well, no. Here's the thing about romance tropes that I feel like I like something that perhaps is not universally liked and it's that miscommunication because it amps up the yearning especially when you have their POVs and it's like like miscommunication because people are like nervous to share their like feelings so they don't want to get hurt kind of miscommunication and like so they misinterpret someone else's shyness as something else and I don't know, as a reader I just, it breaks my heart and it makes me so happy when they realize and get over that barrier, like in general within books. So I feel like I kind of like miscommunication when it's done in that way. I don't like miscommunication when people like simply don't talk to each other because I don't know. But this is like different because it's, it's getting over like personal barriers and personal emotional barriers to make you present for someone else. And also it just like as a reader you like read scenes and you're just like ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> which is always fun and again the yearning is just chef's kiss up there this book is very steamy by the way this is an adult romance novel so that means there are very steamy scenes so please keep that in mind if you're just gonna bring this book up which you should because it is so just like It's just so fun. I love it. Every I just love them too. Oh, I love them. It's so late. I need to go to bed. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm in essentially fancy pajamas this morning. Desperate need of this cup of coffee because I stayed up till past 2 a.m. reading Get a Life, Chloe Brown. The good news is I read almost 400 pages yesterday, which I wasn't expecting, and I'm almost done with my first book. So 
definitely starting the readathon out strong i'll do a bit more of an update later today i have obviously i'm working right now so i gotta I gotta i gotta jet to my my office um but i just wanted to check in and say oops i stayed up way too late last night but the book is so cute okay bye do we think matilda is just exhausted from all the lounging she's been doing today like just sprawled just sprawled out isn't that right matilda it's one of those days where i have had i'm so dark meetings all day so i haven't been able to listen to my audiobook at all i have one more hour of meetings and then i'm gonna finally make lunch it's like 1 30 right now so 2 30 i have some carrot soup carrot ginger soup i'm gonna heat up which is gonna be so good um and then i have a couple more hours of meetings but you know so basically what I'm trying to say is I don't think I'm going to be able to listen to my audiobook today, which is a bit of a bummer. But tomorrow and Thursday I should be able to, no problem. So I'm hoping to catch up a bit there. And then obviously after work I'm going to finish Get a Life Chloe Brown, which I have I think about 100 pages left. So not very much. I feel like I'm going to fly through that. And then I'm going to start my next book or maybe I'll read some of the Assassin's Quest TBD. But yeah, just wanted to say hi. I'm here. <laughs> I'm working, but I wish I was reading. And voila, soup's done. Hello world, it's me. <laughs> um, I've just finished work, it's about 7.30, and I've just been, actually, well, I finished work about 30 minutes ago and I immediately picked up Get a Life Chloe Brown, so I finished work at seven. Chloe was on a conference call, so I didn't blog. But I did read another like 40 pages of this, so I have very little left as you can see, so I'm going to quickly finish it. My reading plans for tonight is first finish this, and then I want to read more of the Assassin's Quest I've decided. Tomorrow I'm going to start a net new book, probably Arusha on the End of Time. But tonight I feel like I just want to finish Chloe Brown and read some of the Assassin's Quest. I'm really pleased with how much I've been able to read so far. I've read over 400 pages so if I can read just a couple more hundred pages tonight I think that'll be very excellent very excellent for two work days um, I do want to watch a bit of fruits baskets tonight I'm not gonna lie but first I'm going to get my reading in I need to make dinner and stuff too but for the most part my primary plan is to first finish Arusha on the end of time I didn't get to uh, listen to any of my audiobook today unfortunately I had just a lot of meetings Tomorrow though I hope to rectify that and have it playing while I get some of my like mindless work done. Um, so yeah, that's my update. This book is absolutely adorable. Such a fast read. I can't wait to read the other books in this series following the sisters. It's just like, I don't know, I just love love and I love watching people fall in love and like help each other and care about each other and lift each other up and that's what this has. It's also so funny, great moments, great characters, just like pure people that you root for and you're so happy that they have each other kind of thing um my favorite thing about romances is the romance itself between the two people like i never want to insert myself in someone else's love story i just love to experience their love story and it makes me so happy for the people involved kind of thing but yeah i have very little left of this so i'm going to quickly read it and then i'm actually going to probably cook dinner tonight which is like some chicken carrots mashed potatoes situation but anyway welcome to tuesday night everyone i'm gonna read hi friends so i finished get a life play brown which i'm not sure if i mentioned so that means i have read it's like 370 pages plus 100 so almost 500 pages it's like 9 30 i have no idea where the night went um and i don't actually feel like cooking dinner so instead i'm gonna make a box of macaroni and cheese because that just felt right in my heart um so i'm gonna make myself some macaroni and cheese i'm gonna watch a few episodes of fruits baskets and then i'm gonna read some assassin's quest tonight i'm trying to read like 100 pages or something and then as i said i'm gonna read ira shaw blah 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 all of that tomorrow but just don't want to keep my reading game going i'm pretty pleased that i've read 500 pages in like a day like two days maybe more in two days especially given that over the weekend i sometimes don't even read that much so i'm definitely like doing better than i thought i would which is which i'm pleased with i'm gonna take that as a win but now i'm gonna make my macaroni and cheese for my dinner on its way also nothing quite hits like 
the beach episode of a slice of life anime where they all buy watermelons and eat them together on the beach right millie there's just nothing that seems more fun than that so that's where i'm at right now all right matilda and i are about to start reading again so i'm gonna get down to business though i don't know how much i'm actually gonna read tonight because staying up till past two reading get a life chloe brown has made me subsequently very tired <laughs> but uh, i'm gonna do what i can matilda's in my mirror spot but happy wednesday everyone especially you matilda um it's another day of me not feeling like getting dressed so i'm in full sweats <laughs> cheers oh wait i did the wrong one cheers i decided to do a salad pickup for lunch and i have about 30 minutes till my next meeting so i'm also going to listen to my audiobook woo hi friends so i just finished work and good news and i'll talk about it after this clip i was able to listen to 65 pages of my audiobook and the second half of the day which i'm really jazzed about but a very exciting package came in the mail and i just have to show it off so it came in this really big box that's right everyone i ordered myself six bags of hot cheetos off the internet and i have never been more excited to realize that i could buy these on the internet so happy wednesday but i did want to chat more about the book as i was listening to it today um i'm now on page 165 chapter 20 um so i'm about 50 percent of the way through and i have to say i'm really liking this book it's definitely even more broad than I realized. I really thought the whole book would be setting around two young children um, in this sort of town, but it's really more expansive than that. It's multi-POV. We're watching one Luna grow up, so a lot of time passes in this series, which I wasn't anticipating. There's also like reoccurring characters, not just Luna, who I thought would be kind of our primary character, and their central emotions are present within this book too, and there's a lot of conflict because of that. Um, it's a very endearing story. It's a really dark story too. Like there's a lot of unfortunate and disturbing things that are happening in the protectorate town. There's also this concept of sorrow that's very much present in this book. Sorrow is like a poison and some of our characters ignore sorrow um, because it will like ruin their magic. But when they do that, they forget important things or they push things off versus some other characters feed off of sorrow so they're trying to like perpetuate sorrow um, to gain more power. The writing is beautiful. I can't say enough good things about the audiobook which is exceptional. I'm really enjoying this story. I feel very connected to all of the characters. Everyone from the little dragon that's in this, the swamp monster, the witch, this young boy we've watched up to be a man, this woman who's locked away in the tower. Like there's so many people I just wasn't anticipating to be present in this story just based on my own expectations going in. So I'm very pleasantly surprised to see how expansive this fantasy world is. And again, the audiobook is exceptional. And from that though, I did want to chat more about my reading plans for tonight. First, I realized I don't think I ever gave a rating for Get a Life Chloe Brown, which I definitely give four stars. It was so entertaining, it was so fun, great characters, great romance. I think probably my only complaint was there's always this third act that tends to happen in romance where there's like conflict and I did feel like that conflict was a little rushed and the resolution was a little rushed, but small complaint there. Overall, it was very entertaining. I flew through the story and I really liked it a lot and i'm very excited for take a hint danny brown which i hear is even better so i'm definitely going to read that soon it was so good highly recommend tonight um aside from listening to my audiobook um i think i'm going to read more of the assassin's quest i did read like 50 pages last night uh, but i want to read more i'm really into that book and then i think i'm going to start arusha but really focus on reading arusha tomorrow and friday and maybe just give myself time to read the assassin's You're quest lost. That being said, I'll do a more formal page count in a bit. I think right now I'm gonna have some hot Cheetos, decompress from work with some television, and um, formally start reading in a bit. And I'll let you know how much I've exactly read because I honestly couldn't even tell you. But anyway, happy Wednesday night and last day of part one of this reading vlog. So, woo woo, we did it. I don't know what we did, but we did it. There is a very intense thunderstorm happening outside and it's really adding a lot of ambiance to this dramatic scene from Fruits Baskets. It's great. Somebody needs to scold me because I am doing terrible at reading for this readathon today. But I'm gonna start now.
I need to cook dinner too. It's like, God, first baskets just takes over my life. But anyway, I'm gonna start reading the Assassin's Quest now for a little and then I'm going to start cooking dinner because I need to get it together. I don't regret watching Fruits Baskets because it was amazing, but I also want to get a lot of reading done for you guys and for myself, so I'm going to do it now. Alrighty, finally sitting down to read some of the Assassin's Quest. I'm going to read a bit, orient myself in this world, and then I'll update with you how many pages I've read. I want to say it's just under 600, which I'm actually pretty pleased with for day three of the readathon, but I've also ventured on to eating ice cream. I sort of just ate a whole bag of Cheetos, forgot about dinner, and then skipped to dessert. Happens to the best of us. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this and, uh, and read. My mom would be really proud. Just kidding. She's probably, hopefully, doesn't see this because she would be mad that I ate Cheetos and ice cream for dinner, but sometimes it happens. Hey everyone, so I wanted to pop in and do a serious update because I just did the math and I've officially read over 600 pages, which I'm really jazzed about. I'm going to be doing more reading tonight, so fingers crossed I get to the 700 page mark because that would be rather excellent. So a quick recap before I talk about my current read, which is the Assassin's Quest, is or the entirety of Get a Life Chloe Brown, which is like 376 pages. I've read 165 pages of The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which I've talked about a lot, really love. Both those books are great. Now I've read about 70-ish pages of The Assassin's Quest since yesterday. Um, I'm really liking this book. I talked about this a lot in my most recent reading vlog. This is the third and final book to the first Fitz trilogy. The first one being The Assassin's Apprentice. And just, this is a series that you follow your main character from literally a super young age to being a, like a grown adult. Um, in the trials and tribulations that you follow them through, Fitz, our main character, just you grow so attached to them. And it's really in this third book where I realize how emotionally invested I am in all of the characters within the story and it just makes it so fun. This book is also very much like a solo journey so far, very much about Fitz confronting a lot of what's happened in the past as well as like his own emotions and kind of deciding like what kind of person he wants to be as well as the politics and everything in the world are really heating up as well. So it's just like a very fascinating book and a very probably the quickest read in my opinion of the other two I've read. I felt like I've fallen into this book immediately, which is really nice. Um, I've passed the 200 page mark, which is great. Uh, I think this book is over 800 pages, so obviously I have a lot left, but I'm happy with my progress so far. And obviously I'm gonna try to read like another 100 pages or so tonight and more throughout this week. Maybe I can finish it this month, but I'm just glad I'm pushing myself to just to read more epic fantasy. This month I've like been very good about it and it's been so fun. I just love long fantasy novels. But so far I just feel like I really clicked with Fitz and I also feel like I really clicked with Robin Hobb's writing officially and I feel confident that I'm very excited about the rest of the books that she has out to read and that I'm gonna really like them, which is just like a really nice feeling in your heart because Nothing is more fun than being like on the precipice of a bunch of books that you know you're gonna love. Like, yes, I've read three books, but there's so many books that she's written and I've got so many things to encounter. I'm looking forward to being emotionally destroyed by all of it. So yeah, I just wanted to pop in, give a bit of a reading update. Say I've read over 600 pages, which I'm pretty jazzed about. And I'm gonna keep going, keep pushing to get over the 700 page mark. Um, yeah. I haven't, I've only read one book, but I feel like it's still read 600 pages, you know? So take, I'll take it, you know what I mean? Hi world, it's late and I'm tired, but I read another 50 pages, which is really exciting. I am loving the Assassin's Quest. Um, things are happening in a way that I wasn't e expecting, but like in a good way, I guess more from a pacing perspective. Um, yeah, basically to echo everything I already said in the last clip about this book, but I'm also just in general enjoying, I feel like we're getting like a broader view of the actual fantasy world and different areas of the kingdom, which I think is great. On top of that, this book is pacing in a direction I wasn't necessarily expecting. And I also feel like we're getting a greater understanding within this book about how the magic works. We've always, magic has been present since book one, like two different forms, wit and skill. Skill is like you well it's not used broadly but it is really like respected and then wit is not wit is like animal magic like you can connect and commune with animals and then 
it's the skill is more like mental you can influence people kind of read their mind control people transport yourself to other people's brains kind of thing um our understanding of it is only through what Fitz knows and his training is complicated <laughs> through the first two books i would say um but i do feel like with his like adventuring we invariably get more context to how the magic works which i think is really cool so i feel like we're just kind of getting an expanded worldview in this novel literally because we're going to more places but also we're learning more about kind of the magic and other elements that have been present in the first two books but are just expanded more in this third one which i am liking a lot but yeah making good progress i'm super tired but i'm gonna try to read 50 more pages and then i'm going to bed <laughs> Hi friends, welcome to the end of the vlog. The next day, I did stay up pretty late last night, per usual, per the, per just the theme of this readathon, reading the Assassin's Quest, and I was able to read just under 700 pages for my first three days of the readathon. Here are all the books. I'm actually really happy with that. Going into the weekend, I feel actually not burnt out, but motivated to kind of up my reading game, which I think is great. Sometimes with readathons, I feel like I go too hard day one, and then I just like cannot for the rest of the readathon. But, I want to quickly go over the books I read. So obviously I read the entirety of Get a Life Chloe Brown, four stars, flew through this, loved this book, such a joy, so happy I had it on my TBR. I was also able to read to page 300 of The Assassin's Quest, which I'm really jazzed with because I'm loving this book a lot and I'm going to definitely be continuing to read this throughout the rest of the days of my readathon. So this will definitely be popping up in other vlogs. And then lastly, I'm on page 165 of The Girl Who Drank the Moon. We'll be listening to this a bunch. Hopefully the new Taylor Swift album doesn't derail me too much from an audiobook perspective, but if it does, I'll just read it because I am really liking this quite a bit. So all in all, I would say a very successful first uh, round. I'm loving all the books. I was able to read quite a bit of pages. I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to sign off the first part of this vlog and I will see you guys soon with part two, which is going to be Thursday and Friday. Bye!